Hello one and all, welcome to another online video by Einstein Academy. In this video, we'll be looking at learning outcomes D and E from the topic of chemical bonding from the JCH2 chemistry syllabus. Learning outcomes D says that candidates should be able to explain the shapes of and bond angles in molecules such as BF3 trigonoplanar, CO2 linear, CH4 tetrahedral, NH3 trigonal pyramidal, H2O bent, SF6 octahedral by using the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. And learning outcomes E is to be able to predict the shapes of and bond angles in molecules that's analogous to those specified in learning outcome D. Okay, so to begin with, we are basically talking about the shape of covalent molecules, molecules that form through covalent bonding. And due to the directional nature of the P, D, and F orbitals, covalent bonds that is formed by the overlapping of atomic orbitals are directed in space, and there will be a specific shape of the molecule that is formed through covalent bonding. The shape of the molecule is determined by the arrangement of the electron pairs around the central atom. So as an example, right, let's say we talk about the water molecule. The water molecule has an oxygen atom in the middle, and then it is bonded by a single covalent bond to a hydrogen and another single covalent bond to a hydrogen. And this will be a bonding pair of electron. And this will also be a bonding pair of electron. However, oxygen being in group 6 actually has a total of 6 valence electrons. Two are used in covalent bonding with the two hydrogens. And hence, there's remaining of two no, uh, lone pair of electrons. So these two are lone pair of electrons. While well, this is bond pair of electrons, bonding pair of electrons. And basically, right, the number of bond pair and the number of lone pairs will determine how the electrons are arranged around this central atom, which will eventually determine the overall shape of the molecule. And how can we decide on the shape? The theory is called the valence shell electron valence shell electron repulsion theory. The shape of the molecule can be predicted using this theory, VSEPR theory in short. So as mentioned before in the previous lecture, we say that we would like to arrange the electrons around the central atom such that the electrons are maximally separated. This is because electrons are all negatively charged and they actually repel one another. So we would like to separate the bonding pairs and the lone pairs as far as possible so that we minimize repulsion and to achieve greater stability of the molecule. And moreover, we will also like to note that a lone pair, lone pair repulsion is greater than the lone pair, bond pair repulsion, which is in turn greater than the bond pair, bond pair repulsion. This will actually determine the bond angle in the shape of the covalent molecule. So as an example, if we go back to the water example, there will be repulsion between this lone pair of electrons and this lone pair of electrons. And there will also be repulsion between this bond pair of electrons as well as this bond pair of electrons. Moreover, there will also be repulsion between this lone pair of electrons and this bond pair of electrons. And the order of the strength of the repulsion is as such. The lone pair lone pair repulsion is stronger than the lone pair bond pair repulsion, which is in turn greater than the bond pair bond pair repulsion. We'll talk more about this when we go through a exact um, when we go through the list of all the shapes of the molecules in the um, next few slides. Okay, so the procedure to predict the shape of the molecule. So number one, we will, first we will determine the number of lone pairs and bond pairs around the central atom by drawing the dot and cross diagram. Each multiple bond is treated as an electron pair. So I'd just like to mention to you, for example, if we have this molecule, right? Let's say POCl2. Okay, I would just like to mention that this is considered as one electron domain, even though it actually has two pairs of electrons in it. Okay, so we don't really count the number of lone pairs or bond pairs, but we count the number of electron domains around the central atom. By electron domains, we just basically means that how many regions of electrons do we need to place around the central atom? So if we look at the phosphorus, we need to place one electron in this region, one electron pairs in this region, and one electron pair in this region. So there are actually three electron domains around this phosphorus atom, even though there's actually like two pairs plus one pair plus one pair for a total of four pairs of electrons around the phosphorus atom. So I mentioned again, although there are four pairs of electrons around this phosphorus atom, one of them being a double bond, 
there are only three electron domains around the phosphorus atom because of the fact that two pairs of electrons are actually in the same direction, in the same space and same direction around the phosphorus atom. Okay, so only three electron domains around this. And what we actually would like to determine is actually the number of electron domains so that we can figure out the basic geometry of the electron pairs that minimizes repulsion. I'll talk more about this in the next two slides. And also take into account of the fact that, as I've mentioned, the lone pair, lone pair repulsion is stronger than the lone pair, bond pair repulsion, which is stronger than the bond pair, bond pair repulsion. We will then determine the position of the atoms from the way the electrons are pairs are shared. And then before finally, we will determine the name of the molecular structure. So this slide will summarize all that I've just said. So we will use examples to discuss what I've said. So for example, if we look at the carbon dioxide molecule, the carbon dioxide molecule has two pairs of electrons that is shared between the carbon and the oxygen. So, and the dot and cross diagram will look like this. If we were to simplify it, it will look like this. So the question is how many electron domains are there around this carbon? So there are two electron domains around this central carbon atom. There are two, this, this two electron domains are, this, this electron domain is oriented in one direction and this one is oriented in one direction. So we only have two electron domains. In order to separate two electron domains, basically like if you want to put two things that's as far apart around this carbon atom, we can show mathematically that what we have to do is to place them at 180 degrees apart. Okay, So this will basically minimize the repulsion between this electron domain and this electron domain because we have maximized the separation. So as a result of this, if we have two electron domains and none of them are lone pairs, then we can see that this, the shape of this molecule will be linear. Okay, so the shape is linear. So this is the last part whereby we determine the name of the molecular structure. You will need to remember the names of this molecular structure, but I will explain a bit on how the name is derived so that you can better remember it. Okay, so again, if we have two electron domains and no lone pairs, the shape of the molecule will be linear just like this carbon dioxide molecule. Okay, we can, we can think a bit about um, separating electron domains on our own, right? So for example, let's say, we have a central atom and we have three electron domains around this central atom. So mathematically, it can be shown that if we have three electron domains, right, we can, what we need to do is to put them in a planar arrangement such that they are all 120 degrees apart. And this would be B, this would be C, and this would be D. Okay, this is a case whereby there are three electron domains around a central atom A. And the shape of this model, if, if there's no lone pair, this would be the actual shape of the molecule and the name of the shape of the molecule is trigonal planar because trigonal meaning that there is three things around this central atom. Planar because like this thing is in a planar shape, it's, it's flat. Okay, and the bond angle is 120 degrees. So if you've got three electron domains and no lone pairs, the shape of the molecule is trigonal planar and, a, and an example of this molecule is BF3 whereby boron is in the middle and is bonded to three fluorine atoms in all single bonds. Okay, and the bond angle is 120 degrees. Now, what happens, right, if one of this bond, one of this electron domain is actually a lone pair, then in that situation, right, I hope that you understand that only these two are actual atoms and this is like an invisible lone pair of electrons. And as a result, this bond the shape of this molecule will turn from trigonal planar. Trigonal planar is because like there are actually four atoms in this molecule. Therefore, we have to consider all four atoms to determine the overall shape of the molecule. However, in this molecule, there are only three atoms and we only look at these three atoms to determine the overall shape. If this is a lone pair of electrons, then this is like, um, this is like invisible to the overall shape of the molecule and the overall shape of the molecule now becomes bent. Okay, so if we have three electron domains, one, two, and three, but one of the electron domain is a lone pair of electrons, then the shape changes from trigonal planar to bent because only these three atoms are visible in determining the shape of the molecule. And since we know that, a second thing is that the lone pair of electrons will actually repel against this bond pair, and this bond pair will also repel against this lone pair of electrons, and that the lone pair of electrons, the repulsion between the lone pair of electrons and this bond pair of electrons is actually stronger, 
then the repulsion between this lone pair of electrons and this lone pair of electrons, what will happen is that this bond angle will actually be forced to be smaller than 120 degrees so that it actually minimizes the repulsion between the lone pair of electrons and the bond pair of electrons since that is a stronger repulsion. So the ideal bond angle for a molecule with three electron domains and one lone pair of, whereby one of the electron domains is a lone pair of electrons is actually slightly smaller than 120 degrees. It can be coated to be 119 or an angle such as like 118 or even 117. Okay, the point is that the bond angle will be smaller due to the compression of the bond angle due to the repul stronger repulsion of the lone pair of electrons and the bond pair of electrons. Okay, this is for the case of three electron domains. Okay, now we will look at the case for four electron domains. Okay, mathematically, okay, if we live in a 2D world, then the way to maximize the separation of four electron domains is in this shape, whereby you can see that it's square planar. Okay, however, we actually do not live in a 2D world, but we live in a 3D world. And we can be shown that mathematically, mathematically shown that if we have four electron domains and we want to separate the four electron domains as far as apart as possible, then the way to separate it is in this way, such that it's in a tetrahedral arrangement. Okay, so the thing is that this solid line indicated that this bond is coming out of the plane of the paper, while this dashed line indicates that this AD bond is going into the plane of the paper. Okay, so basically like this ABCD, right, is actually arranged in a trigonal pyramidal arrangement like this. Okay, okay. Okay, in this arrangement, and then like you have C on top of the molecule. So this is the shape of the tetrahedral arrangement. Okay, so this the shape of this molecule whereby you have four electron domains and none of them are lone pairs, whereby every single atom is visible to the overall shape of the molecule. Therefore, the shape of the molecule of this shape is known as tetrahedral shape. And it can be shown mathematically that each of this bond angle will be 109.5 degrees. Now, if one of these electron domain is a lone pair of electrons, then the, the shape will become like this, whereby now the lone pair of electrons is invisible. And the, the resultant shape of this, by removing this bond, AC, to turn it into a lone pair of electrons, whereby it's invisible to the overall shape of the molecule, will now become trigonal pyramidal, whereby this is the case whereby there's four electron domains and one lone pair of electrons whereby one of the electron domain is a lone pair of electrons. The shape is called trigonal pyramidal. And the, because again, the lone, lone pair of electrons repulsion with the bond pair electron repulsion is stronger than the repulsion between this lone pairs, between this lone pairs, this bond angle will all be compressed such that this bond angle will be smaller than 109.5 degrees. And the idealized bond angle is known to be 107 degrees, just slightly smaller than 109.5 degrees. Okay, the final case that we're going to look at is four electron domains, but two of them is removed as lone pair of electrons. They become invisible to the overall shape of the molecule because they're actually lone pair of electrons. So if you look at this um, molecule, right, it's actually CAD only, and the overall shape of the molecule is that it will be bent, and this angle will be much smaller than 109.5 degrees because as compared to this case, because this one there's only repulsion between one lone pair and the bond pairs, but this one is the repulsion between two lone pairs and the bond pairs. And hence, since the repulsion is even stronger, it will compress the CAD bond angle to a larger extent such that the bond angle is on the order of about 104.5 degrees. Okay, so um, if you look at the shape of the molecule, it's actually a band shape. So we can also call this as a band shape or angular, but this is usually the term that we use in the A-level syllabus. Okay, so this is for the case whereby there's four electron domains and out of the four electron domains, two of them are lone pairs of electrons that do not contribute to the overall shape of the molecule. When I say do not contribute to the overall shape of the molecule, I'm saying that they are invisible when we consider the overall shape of the molecule because the overall shape, the molecule is really just CAD. Okay, so that's for the case of four electron domains. And now we will move on to the case whereby there is five electron domains. 
Okay, so anyway, right, just some examples here, like uh, I'll, I'll just leave you to read this. So these are some of the examples of the different case of the different number of electron domains and lone pairs. So give it a go to a certain whether you are able to determine that for all these molecules, does it, like for example, for ammonia, are you able to figure out that is it indeed true that there are four electron domains around the central nitrogen atom and out of the four electron domains, one of them is the lone pair and hence the shape will be trigonal pyramidal and understand that why the idealized bond angle is 107 degrees instead of the 109.5 degrees of the tetrahedral. This is because of the compression of the bond angles due to the stronger lone pair bond pair repulsion. Okay, now we go to the case of five electron domains. Again, mathematically, it can be shown that if you've got five electron domains, the way that we separate maximally the bond angles is in this case, whereby we put these three atoms in a trigonal planar arrangement. Then the final two electron domains is in this order. And this shape is called trigonal. Trigonal because of this tree, trigonal. Then there are two things on top of the A which is called trigonal bipyramidal. Okay, this is for the case where there's five electron domains and there is no lone pair of electrons. So in this molecule, there are actually two low, uh, there are actually two low, uh, there are actually two bond angles that we need to talk about. So this bond angle between BAC, CAD and DAB, this is 120 degrees because it's in a trigonal planar arrangement. While the bond angle EAB, EAC, EAD or FAB, FAD, FAC this is at a bond angle of 90 degrees. Okay, so basically, like if you look at this shape, this is the trigonal by pyramidal shape. There are two bond angles. So I've as mentioned, like this one is 90 degrees, and the 120 degrees is for the three atoms that's for the four atoms that's in the trigonal planar arrangement. Okay, so there are two bond angles, 90, 120. Of course, there's a 180 angle, which is the angle between EAF. Okay, this is 180 degrees. Okay, this is for the case whereby it's five electron domain. Mathematically, it can be shown that this is the way to separate five electron domains around a central atom, maximally separate the five electron domains. Now, we have a dilemma here in the sense that if we, if we want to remove one of, if, if we, instead of five, it, okay, sorry, whereby we need to replace one of the electron domains with a lone pair of electrons. There's two possibilities. One possibility is that we can put the lone pair in the, axial position. So this is called, these two bonds is known as the axial positions, while these three bonds is known as the equatorial position. Okay, so the equatorial basically um, follows the convention of the uh, latitude on the earth, whereby the, the circle around the, 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 the largest circumference of the earth is called the equator. So it's like this one is like the equator whereby it's on the, the largest part of the sphere. And this is called the axial position. So we actually have a choice whether we can choose whether we want to put the lone pair of electrons on the axial position. And if we put it on the axial position, this is what we will accomplish. While if we choose to put the lone pair of electrons in the equatorial position, this is the shape that we would achieve. Okay, I hope this is clear. There are two possible ways that we can remove one of the bond pairs to put the lone pair of electrons. There are two possibilities, but it can be shown mathematically that the repulsion that is caused by this case, whereby we put the lone pair of electrons in the axial position, will cause a larger repulsion. Okay, and hence this is not preferred. And this for this, this is actually the case that is preferred. So basically just know this. When you go from a trigonal by pyramidal shape and you want to change one of the bonds and replace it with a lone pair of electrons, you always replace it such that the lone pair of electrons is in the equatorial position because it can be shown mathematically, the proof is not needed, but it can be shown mathematically that the repulsion caused by placing the lone pair of electrons in the equatorial position is actually smaller as compared to putting the lone pair in the axial position. So if you were to look at this shape, right, and you turn it around, you, you can see that, like, okay, if I put, like, um, uh, if, I, if I put C here, and then I put D here, and then I put um, A, sorry, let me see, E here, and then F here, this is like in the shape of a seesaw, whereby the lone pair of electrons here, it's like a seesaw, and hence the shape of this uh, molecule, this type of molecule, whereby there is five electron domains, and out of the five electron domains, one of them is a lone pair of electrons, 
is called the seesaw shape. And again, the bond angle will be uh, 173.1 degrees, whereby the 173.1 degrees is actually like the bond angle of EAF. It will again be compressed by this lone pair of electrons because the repulsion of this lone pair of electrons and this bond pair is stronger than the remaining repulsion between the bond pair of electrons. So it will cause this EAF bond angle to bend away and to be compressed from the idealized bond angle of 180 and therefore the resultant bond angle will be 173.1 degrees. The, uh, the, for this bond angle, it should actually be 120 but again it will be compressed due to the lone pair of electrons and hence the bond angle will be 101.6 degrees. An example of this case of a molecule is the SF4 molecule. Okay, so verify for yourself that you are indeed able to determine the SF4 has five electron domains around the sulfur atom and there are, out of the five electron domains, one of them is a lone pair of electrons. Okay, so let me quickly erase this so that we can now talk about when we replace two of the bond pairs with lone pairs of electrons. Okay, so let me replace this. Okay, so now when two of the bond pairs have been turned into lone pairs. So you have a lone pair here and then you have another lone pair here. So again, I remind you, you're supposed to put the lone pairs in the equatorial position. So this is D and this is E and this is F. Okay, and this shape is called the T-shaped molecule because like this actually forms a T. This thing, they are all actually at, um, EAF is supposed to be 90 degrees away from one another, while EAD is supposed to be 90 degrees one away from one another, and hence the shape of the molecule would be like a T. So it's called T-shape, whereby there is five electron domains. Out of the five electron domains, two of them are lone pairs of electrons. And again, due to the compression of the bonds, due to the stronger repulsion of the lone pair bond pair repulsion, the bond angle will now be compressed to be much smaller than 180 degrees, and this bond angle that is supposed to be 120 is also compressed to be smaller and is about on the order of 87.5 degrees. Okay, finally, if we are going to replace one more, lone, uh, one more bond pair to become a lone pair, then we again put it in the equatorial position. So out of all this, this is the lone pair of electrons and now this will be EAF and this will now become a linear shape whereby there is five electron domains. Out of the five electron domains, three of them are lone pairs of electrons, the so linear shape. And for this bond angle, it will be exactly 180 degrees. Because there's no way to compress the bond angle because like all three of the lone pairs is all compressing it equally in the same direction. So it causes it to go back to the perfect geometry of a linear shape, which is 180 degrees. Okay. Okay, so now we will talk about the last case whereby there's six electron domains around a central atom. So again, it can be mathematically shown that we have six electron domains around a central atom. The way that we maximize the separation is as such. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. All right, so this is known as an octahedral shape. And then there are six electron domains and none of them are lone pair of electrons. And the idealized bond angle for this is that is there will be 90 degrees bond angle and um, 180 degrees bond angle. So as you can see, FAG is an example of a 180 degrees bond angle, while FAB, FAE, so on and so forth, are bond angles of 90 degrees. Okay, example of this type of shape of molecule is in the SF6 molecule. Now, if we were to replace one of the bond pairs with a lone pair of electron, we don't have to talk about whether we replace it in the equatorial axial, axial position for this molecule. The reason being that this molecule is perfectly symmetrical. The axial position is no different from the equatorial position. So we would replace one of this with a lone pair of electrons and doing so, we would arrive at a shape of a square pyramidal. Okay, square because of the fact that this four is a square and then it's pyramidal, not bipyramidal. Bipyramidal for the case of trigonal bipyramidal, right? Okay, actually like this should actually be called trigonal bipyramidal. It's bi because there are, oh, I'm sorry, sorry, not this one. For this case, trigonal bipyramidal, there's a word bi here because there's actually 
like two parts of like between out of these three, right? There is two things that are sticking out, one and two. So this bar refers to the up and down. But for this case, there's only the down group, and therefore this is square pyramidal. Okay, so square pyramidal is the name of the shape of the molecule, whereby you have six electron domains, and out of which one of them is a lone pair of electrons. And again, the bond angle will be compressed such that um, this this bond because like the C D B E right will actually be compressed downwards so that D A B D A G will actually be compressed to be slightly smaller than ninety degrees and the bond angle will be about on the order of eighty four point eight degrees. However, D A B because although D is compressed downwards and B is compressed down uh down okay sorry so um there won't be actually there won't be a this one the bond angle of one eighty degrees will also be compressed slightly because of the fact that D is pushed downward and B is also pushed downward such that the angle of DAB will also be smaller than 180 degrees. Okay, an example of this type of molecule is the BRF5 molecule. The final case is whereby we remove the, uh, what, whereby we put one more bond pair and replace it with a lone pair of electrons. So we will replace it with G so that the lone pair of electrons is maximally separated at 180 degrees we want to prioritize maximizing the separation of the lone pair of electrons because that actually causes a stronger repulsion. So we will put them at 180 degrees apart and hence the resultant shape of the molecule will be square planar. So if we have six electron domains whereby two of them is lone pairs, we will arrive at a shape of square planar and the bond angles in this molecule will be 90 degrees and 180. 90 degrees will be between DAC, CAB, BAE and EAD while 180 degrees will be between DAB, EAC and EAC. Okay, so basically again I repeat, the steps to figuring out the shape of the molecule is number one, first figure out the number of electron domains around the central atom. This will determine the, um, the basic geometry first. Okay, so the basic geometry being either linear, trigonal planar, tetrahedral, trigonal bipyramidal or octahedral. Then depending on how many of the electron domains are actually lone pairs, you start to put the lone pairs into one of the, and replace it in one of the electron domains and see what is the resultant shape of the molecule, treating the lone pairs as invisible to the overall shape of the molecule. And of course, if you were to code the bond angle, you have to take note that the lone pair, lone pair repulsion is always stronger than lone pair, bond pair repulsion, which is stronger than bond pair, bond pair repulsion, which would cause compression of certain bond angles to be smaller than the bond angles from the basic geometry. Okay, I hope this is clear. If there's something that you're not sure of, do drop me in the comments so that I can answer them or to make my explanation clearer. Okay, so in this lecture, we learn how to explain the shapes of and bond angles in molecules such as BF3, trigonal planar, CO2 linear, CH4 tetrahedral, NH3 trigonal pyramidal, H2O bent, SF6 octahedral by using the VSEPR theory. Okay, the principles of the VSEPR theory is also stated, is to basically adopt a geometry such that you maximize the separation of the electron domains and also such that the bond, uh, sorry, the lone pair, lone pair repulsion is stronger than lone pair, bond pair repulsion, which is stronger than the bond pair, bond pair repulsion. And also to be able to predict the shapes of and bond angles in molecules analogous to those specified in D. Okay, so basically, the whole lecture is to be able to apply the VSEPR theory to predict the shapes of various molecules, covalent molecules, as well as the bond angles in these covalent molecules. Okay, hope you enjoyed this lecture and learn how to use the VSEPR theory. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. And I'll see you for the next lecture, whereby we go through some of the questions that specifically test on these two learning outcomes. Okay, see you. And thank you for tuning in.